when I worked at the Bayou, um, we had, uh, in those days, it was very limited consoles available. We had the uh, Altec 1220. When we did any kind of a show or any kind of a band, I wanted to give them the tools to make them sound as good as possible. And so everybody walked away with a real, you know, memorable experience. And I'd always been fascinated with flanging. I thought it was really cool. And so I built the flanger and I built the doubler and I had them set up. So all you had to do is just flip a switch and then the master and you could flip it in and it would be, you know, you'd have your, your voice double or you could have the flanging and stuff. And I actually have it home, at, at home. And it was, uh, I, it was my first circuit board. I made it myself. Uh, etched it and everything, you know, and had a nice, nice panel made. I, we got pictures of it, and we did, you know, we did Foreigner first time they ever played in the club. They did, they played at our club, and they used the stuff. Uh, same with Dire Straits, first time they ever played, that was there. Uh, Pat Benatar, uh, Molly Hatchet, you know, I mean, Kiss, all these bands, you know, and they all just, they, they're just fascinated by it. And uh, it was, you know, it was basically just trying to make it sound like a record live but still have the live effect, you know? And it was great, it worked perfectly. And the doubler was, uh, it was real interesting because I figured out a way to do real tight doubling by uh, doing a, a way of canceling the, the flanging effect. So you could put it on a guitar or a voice and it didn't sound like the typical double picked 40 millisecond delay kind of delay thing. And so everybody used it. Mike Delug, who is the engineer, and uh, I found out a couple of days ago that Michael Brower was his assistant in those days, and uh, they used it on um, the horns on Copacabana, and they used it on Engelbert Humperdinck's voice, and they really they thought it was really cool. And he asked me, he says, "Whatever happened to that box?" You know, and that was the beginning of it. But you know, and every year at the at all the trade shows, I'd always walk around and listen to everybody's choruses and all stuff. Nobody ever figured out how to do it. And uh, I finally, now that the plug-in thing came around, I figured, well, you know, I'll give it a shot. So I contacted the guys at SoftTube. VSO is a variable speed oscillator. And um, when you do flanging with a tape machine, you're basically taking, you know, a sound and another sound, and you're, you're slipping them past each other. So this is running at speed, and you slow this tape machine down, and you get to the, you know, from 10 to 50 milliseconds, and then you start increasing the speed of the machine. And as it passes the zero point, and goes over it actually has that you know that kind of sound there's two ways to do that one was the the later machines you could do it with a variable speed oscillator because they had an oscillator running it but the earlier machines you just you varied the voltage into the into the uh, capstan motor and when you brought the voltage down a little bit it would you know there wasn't as much current so the motor would start to drag a little and you'd speed it up and then the motor would increase you know, it had more current, so that's kind of the way you you know you used to originally do it. And that's how a lot of those old records were done that way. So, I tried with the flanger. I tried to emulate that as an option. So you have a VSO knob, and then you have the just manual functions that all the flangers have. You know, with the sweep and, and mix and blend and the offset and all that. But there is a mode that you actually turn it to the right and it goes up, and then you have to pull it back to the left to slow it down. Just like flying an airplane, you, know, you turn it, you got to straighten it out, and then you got to turn it back and straighten it out. We also emulated the servo bounce of the servo because when you when you change it real fast, the servo would try to correct itself, and you get this physical, you know, hunting, and so it, and it and it tapers off. So as it would cross over, it would go back and forth a few times, and you know that kind of stuff. So it has a real tape tape machine feel to it. Yeah.